The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. May the Lord be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what they had been told, what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know I've asked this before, but this little sign on my chair says, Reserved for Clergy. <laughs> Is that really necessary? <laughs> Does my sister try and get up here and sit on the chair when I'm not here? <laughs> we gather... Uh, on this day and the church calls us to great joy for this historic moment in in human history when God incarnate came into the world but joy seems to be a hard thing for us to to wrap ourselves around these days with there's you know I was thinking uh, a, a year ago I was preparing a homily for Christmas and thinking how do I preach joy when there's, the pandemic is raging and so much was happening in, that's hard. And little did I know, and little did any of us know, that we would be right back here again this year. And not only the pandemic, but obviously there's so many uh, things weighing on us as, as a nation, as a world. There's the rumors of war and the, the saber rattling going on over in the Ukraine. So it, it's hard, uh, it's hard to imagine uh, how do we do this? How do we be a people joyful? Um, some of you know this, I had in the early, late 80s rather, I, I spent some time in El Salvador doing humanitarian work there. And during those years, uh, there was a really horrible uh, civil war going on. And it was extremely violent. And Anyone that was not uh, supporting the military and the government were um, subject to death squads that went around rounding people up and they would capture people and torture them and their bodies would uh, appear uh, later in alleys and in gutters. Um, this went on for many, many years. It was the place where Os Archbishop Oscar Romero was assassinated. I mean, hundreds of thousands of civilians six Jesuits, four churchwomen. So this went on, and, and when I was down there, you know, I, um, I found people who were capable of joy um, in the midst of all that. Uh, with great loss in their lives, with great tragedy, with great fear, they were able to gather and to celebrate, to sing and to laugh and to dance. And so I was asking a couple of them at one point, like, how do you do this in the midst of such brutality and violence? in the midst of so much pain. And they said, that's all that we have is this present moment. That's all that we have. And so we, we as a people will celebrate and take this moment and enjoy with gusto because we don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring. We don't know what an hour from now is going to bring. So they showed me that that actually was possible, that we can do this. So how do we do this? How do we do this in the midst of all that's happening in our world all that's happening in our nation, this great division, this rise over the last few years, a, a reemergence of racism and bigotry. We do it, I think, because a light has come into our darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. We heard Mary proclaim that gospel from John before, as Mass began this morning, that that light came into the darkness. The original translation is, 
That light is shining in the darkness. It's a present tense. It is here and now. It's happening for us. That is the truth. And we know the truth. And the truth is not a proposition. The truth is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. And we know that that light, Jesus Christ, is shining in our present reality, in our darkness. And so we can be joyful people knowing that God is with us. But it's, it's even more than just with us, journeying with us. That great reality, that divine light, lives within each and every one of us. We carry God's Spirit within our own lives, within our own hearts. Every single human being carries the Spirit of God. We are all part of this. That's what connects us all. That's what makes us all one human family, that we're all connected by God's great spirit that dwells each of us. And each of us is given a message. We are the message that God wants to speak to the world, that only you and I can speak our message that God has planted within us. So that every time a kind, an act of kindness happens in the world, Christ is reborn in the midst. Every time a sick person is cared for, every time a prisoner is visited, every time a hungry person is fed or a homeless person is sheltered, God is right there in the midst. God is present and Christ is reborn. So we are a joyful people because of that reality, that we can take joy, that the darkness around us that we experience is not real. The light is real. Love is real. Our, we are given this power this, to do amazing things because we carry God's Spirit within our own lives, within our own hearts. You know, the, the hatred and the racism and the white supremacy, all those things that have been raging these years around us, that's not power. Those knuckleheads that went to the, the nation's capital a year ago and tried to overturn an election and tried to overthrow our democracy, they think they're powerful? That's not power. That's ignorance. That's fear. That has no place in this divine world. That stuff is what the first reading talked about, that that stuff is destruction, and that will be sent to the unquenchable fires, as John preached, because it doesn't have any power. The real power is love. That's the power. Love is what, the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that exists and will continue to exist, and we bring that love into the world. So every time we act kindly towards another human being, every time we reach out, to others to be helpful to those less fortunate than us. We bring Christ into the world and Christmas happens all over again. I'm so fortunate to be able to work at the Pope Francis Center for the Homeless and every day I get to see dozens of volunteers that come down and spend their mornings giving of themselves to, to those who are less fortunate. You know, making sure that people are fed and they're taken care of, that their medical needs are met, that they have showers and laundry. Our city, our community is filled with examples like that. That reality, the Salvation Army, the, you know, the Alternatives for Girls, you name it. All of these nonprofits, all these people working in our communities, trying to make it a better place, they're all doing it. They're all bringing Christmas. So every time a child is brought into the world, every time a teacher goes into a classroom, every time a sick person is cared for in a hospital, Christ is reborn. That's our joy. That's our message. So let's go forth joyfully knowing that we are part of this great divine mystery of love for the world.